Yeah, we had a we had an interesting rivalry. You know, I, I was always a big believer in um, in uh, you know keeping open doors with competitors. You know, like I I'm a I'm a big reader of the you know the art of war and you know keeping uh, keeping your enemies close or your friends close and enemies closer kind of thing. And you know, Alienware was an interesting company. Um, they they did extremely well. Uh, you know, they, they grew very fast, and uh, and 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 Voodoo sort of took a, a a slightly different approach. We didn't quite do the volume, but but we created a a, a premium brand that that um, that was great. So yeah, it was a fun time. Like, how did you have that drive when other people were saying like, hey, you know, we still had the clones starting to come out. That drive to go and say, hey, I'm going to build this company and turn it into something. Yeah, you know, it, I, I can't say that it was like sort of a day one thing, but I, I can certainly say that it was just a, um, there was, it was a drive to create something premium, you know, in a market where there wasn't anything premium, you know, um, and uh, and it's, it's, it's amazing to think that we turned a commodity into a luxury, right, um, and, and I think, I think you can, you can pretty, like when I, when I work with startups, I always hear, you know, these sort of, new entrepreneurs come in and say a space is too crowded so therefore you can't get into it and, and I always laugh at that and I think you know these guys have no idea what they're talking about like a, a crowded space you can come into and you can create a niche that, that can be extremely lucrative um, and that, that that has to do with like brand building and culture building team building you know um, so so for, for me going into the PC space it was it was pretty easy like to to go in and and, and create a um, you know a high-end Product in a space that was extremely crowded, um, and 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 I I I've always been a gamer, uh, you know I I've, I've been a, a gamer longer than anybody I know. Um, I've had every single console ever made. I even had a Commodore 64. Um, I had a Apple II C, uh, you know, and then of course I had every console, including Neo Geo. I mean, who's who's owned a Neo Geo other than me? I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so I'm I'm a big time gamer. I mean, is it hard being that having that entrepreneur spirit uh, to move on, you know, to something that you know you grew and you made? It was like your baby, or is it just that? Hey, I have this drive, so you know you gotta keep making that moose because that's yeah, part I mean, of your drive. You know, I I think the hardest part for for any entrepreneur is to let go. You know, especially the first time around, and and so when when we sold to HP. Uh, things were good for a while, you know. We we launched Blackbird and we created, you know, new Omen products and stuff like that. And then, um, and then something happened in the company. You know, um, Mark Hurd uh, ended up leaving for for some you know stupid reasons. After he left, um, they brought in a new guy, Leo Apotheker, and he was a complete disaster. Probably the worst CEO of all time. And and I I left like five days after he was to join. He just I wasn't into it and. And I, th I saw the company was going down a path of, uh, they didn't believe in brand at all. Like, I mean, the, the guy running the, the personal systems group, unfortunately, um, knew nothing about creating a brand. Um, and, uh, and he even called me out once in the middle of a, uh, you know, and I'm sure there's people from HP that will be watching this, but he called me out in the middle of, a, of an executive uh, retreat uh, where I asked him about, you know, brand, and I basically confronted the people on stage and said, you know, how is HP going to build a brand that goes uh, from the extreme low end to the extreme high end? Like, there's no brand in the world that has that type of elasticity. And uh, and the person on stage tried to parallel it to Mercedes Benz, and and I and I said like that's that's not the same comparison because you know HP wanted to go all the way down to the you know say the Ford Fiesta all the way up to the Ferrari and you know with with one brand and you ju you just can't do that. Um, so you know, so I left the company, and uh, and you know, at, at that point, I, I remember thinking to myself, "Wow, you know, this is all I know." I mean, I've been involved in this company for for you know something like 16, 17, or maybe eighteen years, I guess, at that time, and uh, it's all I knew. I, I graduated from high school. I started Voodoo. So what am I going to do? So you know, I so I started dabbling around with a few things. I created some technology with some friends that combines betting with video games, which is really cool. Um, and then, uh, and then I got this call from Microsoft to go join Microsoft and figure out what to do, at, you know, at Microsoft. And um, and I learned very quickly what it was like to join a big company uh, as an entrepreneur. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, I uh, I joined Microsoft as a GM, which which is a, a extremely senior level inside a company like Microsoft. Um, but I was the GM of Xbox Experience, which 
you know, and anyone at Microsoft would probably laugh at that title, you know, looking back, because it really was a, a stupid title. But they didn't really have a place for me. They just they, they just hired me because of you know they, they saw something in me which is great. I have to I have to look back and thank the people that hired me in. Um, and basically, I, I went in thinking that I would have a team, a budget, and support to go create something amazing. Um, on on day one when I arrived, uh, there was a reorg, and and basically I had four different managers in my first eleven months, and it was a terrible onboarding experience. But um, but what I did learn was you know. I learned that at Microsoft, you can pretty much do anything you want as long as you're good at it. And uh, it, it really is an amazing company because everybody there is smarter than me. Um, and you know, so you got to figure out how do you lead incredibly smart people into something new. So, so I realized, like any entrepreneur does, that you know, um, when when your back is against the wall, you have to figure out how to create value with something that you know that very few people know. And you know, Microsoft needed to build some credibility in the in the startup ecosystem. I spent a lot of time in the startup ecosystem, so I pitched some people on the idea of creating a fund for startups that was called the Bing Fund, and and it worked. Um, you know, I I got to uh, create a team and and started the Bing Fund, and that eventually turned into Microsoft Ventures, which was amazing. So I ran that for a couple of years and. Realizing, you know, when I was at Microsoft Ventures, I used to spend time with startups and entrepreneurs from around the world. You know, every everywhere from you know uh, Paris to London, Israel, you know, even Moscow, China, India, like all sorts of places. You know, and I got to I got to interact with all these amazing entrepreneurs. And um, and I think the turning point for me was when I was in um, when I was doing a talk somewhere. I forgot. I think maybe it was in Berlin. I was doing a talk on stage and, and talking about how. As an entrepreneur, you have to be hungry and you have to go out and create things and you know and be willing to cut your paycheck. And here I am, you know, making like a uh, you know pretty much seven figures at Microsoft, uh, uh, and and thinking to myself, what am I doing? I'm lecturing these guys, um, these, these men and women, on how to be an entrepreneur. And here I am being the biggest hypocrite ever. I've been in this company for three and a half years, and I'm like, I'm not creating anything anymore. I I need to go out and create. And that was it. So, but that was sort of. The, the, the spark that led me to kind of leave and start Unicorn.